Welcome to Prayer and Bible Band, Lesson 8. I do not own the rights to this music. Today's topic is God is angry with the wicked. The background reading is coming out of Psalm chapter 9, verse 17, Psalms chapter 10, verse 4, Psalms chapter 11, verses 4 through 7. Proverbs chapter 11, verses 5 through 11. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 21. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 13. The devotional reading is coming out of Psalms chapter 10, verses 1 through 18. Psalms chapter 9, verse 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Psalms chapter 10, verse 4. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Psalms chapter 11, verses 4 through 7. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. The Lord tried the righteous, but the wicked in him that loveth violence, his soul hated. Upon the wicked, he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. For the righteous Lord loves righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. Proverbs chapter 11. Verses 5 through 11. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. When a wicked man dieth, his expectation shall perish, and the hope of unjust men perisheth. The righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked cometh in his stead. A hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. When it goeth well with the righteous, the city rejoiceth, and when the wicked perish, there is shouting. By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. Isaiah chapter 57 Verse 21 There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 Verse 13 But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. Psalms chapter 10 Verses 1 through 18 Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. He hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved for I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. 
Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. He croucheth and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. He hath said in his heart, God hath forgotten. He hideth his face. He will never see it. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up thine hand, forget not the humble. Wherefore doth the wicked contemn God? He hath said in his heart, Thou wilt not require it. Thou hast seen it, for thou beholdest mischief and spite to requite it with thy hand. The poor committeth himself unto thee. Thou art the helper of the fatherless. Break thou the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness till thou find none. The Lord is king for ever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his land. Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou wilt prepare their heart. Thou wilt cause thine ear to hear. To judge the fatherless and the oppressed, that the man of the earth may no more oppress. The central verse for today's lesson. I will read the King James Version first, and then the New International Version of Psalms chapter 7, verse 11. God judgeth the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. The New International Version of Psalms chapter 7, verse 11. God is a righteous judge, a God who displays his wrath every day. The key terms for today's lesson, reproach, depravity, criminality. Reproach, an expression of rebuke or disapproval, a cause or occasion of blame, discredit or disgrace. Depravity, a corrupt act or practice, the quality or state of being corrupt, evil or perverted the quality or state of being marked by corruption or evil. Criminality, the quality or state of being relating to, involving, or being a crime, criminal activity. The introduction says, The word of the Lord tells the believer that God is angry with the wicked every day. We ask the question, why is God angry with the wicked? Let us find out who are the wicked. The Collins Dictionary says that wickedness describes something or someone bad or deliberately harmful to people. Wicked is also described as evil and morally wrong. In the Bible, wicked means the state of being wicked, a mental disregard for justice, righteousness, truth, honor, and virtue, evil in thought and life, depravity, sinfulness, and criminality. God is a loving God, but he does not like the acts nor the deeds of the wicked, so he becomes angry with them. Psalm 9 and 16 says that the Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. The discussion says God is angry with the wicked because their wickedness is a sign of deep rebellion against him and his laws and rules. God gets angry, but he is a just God. God created man in his image and his likeness. God desired to have a man who would be perfect and sinless, who would live in harmony with him. He created a man who would be submissive to him and would give him pure praise and worship. When Adam sinned, he disobeyed God's rules and caused mankind to to be in rebellion against God. God loved man, but the disobedience of man caused God's anger to be kindled against him. Man's disobedience showed man's hatred and disdain for God and his laws. Psalm number 10 talks about the actions of the wicked. David tells how ruthless and unjust they are. He said it seems like they ignore God and get away with it. The wicked cause trouble and grief to those who are weaker than they are. They use profanity. They murder innocent people. 
and they pounce on the helpless and drag them away in nets. They think that God is not watching them, but the wicked and they do not seem to realize that God's anger is against them. In chapter 11, the Lord looks at the righteous and the wicked, and he will examine each one of them. And when he is ready, he will rain down blazing coals and burning sulfur on the wicked, punishing them with scorching winds. Isaiah said that the wicked are like the troubled sea, when it cannot rest whose waters cast up miry and dirt. God said that there is no peace for the wicked. The wicked constantly do and say things that bring hurt and harm to others. The believers must remember that God loves the sinners, but he hates their sins. He allows the wicked to fall by his wickedness. When the wicked dies, his expectation perishes. He has nothing good to look forward to and he shall not stand in judgment. For the wicked works will not stand, for they are a deceitful work. And that's found in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 18. The wicked knows that his works are not right, so his expectation is the wrath of God. God said that the wicked comes among his people, but they always have negative agendas. They are always seeking ways to harm and hurt others. God lets the believers know that he permits the wicked to be wicked, but he does not like it. And that's found in Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 26. The believers must let their confidence be in God and forget about the people, relationships, the job, the world news, current affairs, injustice, deeds of wickedness, and all other things that are out of his control. Let God handle his business. This is still his world and he knows how to handle the wickedness of this world. The word reminds the believer that the wicked shall be turned into hell in every nation that forgets God. Sometimes the believers wonder why some nations suffer so much and seemingly others prosper. One has to consider who is leading the country are they doing or permitting wickedness to reign in that country? Are they promoting or endorsing wickedness? Are believers allowed to worship God freely? The believers must remember that God is a God of love, but he is also a God of wrath. He is a jealous God who will allow other gods to lead for only so long. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any nation. And that's Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. The conclusion says, Usually when someone is angry with another person, they want nothing to do with the person they are angry with. But that is not the case with God. When Adam sinned, he caused condemnation for all men. But God allowed Jesus, Jesus' one act of righteousness, to provide justification and life for all men. By the acts of the man Adam, all men were made sinners. And by the obedience of the one man, Jesus, all men can, can be made righteous, if they will turn to Christ in faith and repentance. Thank God for his mercy and his grace. For when his anger was hot against Israel, he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them and sold them into the hands of their enemies. And that's Judges chapter 2 verse 14. It is important that the believers remember God and always honor him because he does not want the anger of God directed toward him. The questions for today's lesson, and you can search the scriptures on your own. Question 1. What can cause a loving God to be angry? Question two, how does a person avoid the wrath of God? Question three, what makes a man wicked? And question four, what is the expectation of the wicked? The essential thought, God has the power to save or to destroy. Make the choice to be saved. The end. God bless you and thank you for joining me today.